Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, July 26. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he's satisfied with the upgrading and expansion works being undertaken at the Chapleton Community Hospital in Clarendon North Central. During a tour of the facility on Wednesday, the Prime Minister said the building was coming together nicely. The renovation works, which began in December 2019, will be completed by October. Phase 2 of the project is being done at a cost of $112 million by the Chase Fund and the National Health Fund. Phase 1 was financed by Blackwood's Clarendon native Beverly Nichols at a cost of $1 million. US dollars. The Chapleton Hospital will serve the surrounding communities of Rock River, Mullet Hall, Summerfield, Crawl River, Pennants, Frankfield and Crooked River. It's expected to provide world-class health service with reduced travel time for residents of the parish. The complex boasts 30 beds, an expanded waiting area and office space for doctors, a new operating theatre and laboratory, as well as improved water storage facility. Up to 40,000 residents of Southeast and Central St. Mary, as well as parts of neighboring Portland, are now receiving regular water supply. It's thanks to Thursday's commissioning of the Itaboreal Well Station. The $25 million investment will provide water to 40 communities. Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Matthew Samuda, says it reflects government's commitment to providing regular and adequate portable water to Jamaican homes. He points out that $62 million is also being spent on 4.8 kilometers of pipeline between Windsor Castle and Hart in Portland. That pipeline will be connected to the pumping station to serve even more Jamaicans on the eastern end of the island. The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, and the Social Development Commission, SDC, will lead a series of sensitization exercises for residents in flood-prone communities. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Desmond McKenzie, says the aim is to educate persons about the potential danger they face from severe weather and steps to safeguard themselves. When Mother Nature speaks, all that we have to do is to take the steps that are necessary to prevent the loss of lives. And we must be proactive. And how can we be proactive? We must listen to the warning, take heed. Minister Mackenzie was addressing the third in a series of semi-virtual town hall meetings in Port Maria recently. An early warning system is to be implemented in the town. The role of the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC, has been expanded following a certificate of authorization by the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. JANAC is now authorized to conduct food safety audits and certify foreign food facilities, such as farms and factories, that will be recognized as FDA certified. The validation certificate was presented to JANAC's Chief Executive Officer by the Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce last week. This means JANAC is one of four accreditation bodies in the world recognized by the FDA in the accredited third party certification program and the only AB uh, with a scope of 10 approvals. JANAC's mutual recognition agreements with regional and international accreditation corporations enable those entities which they accredit to have their results accepted worldwide. The certification may also be used in situations where the FDA requires that imported products are validated before entering the United States. In addition, it will establish eligibility for participation in the United States Voluntary Qualified Importer Program, which offers expedited review and entry of food into the U.S. JANAC is one of four FDA-approved accreditation bodies globally and the sole such entity in the English-speaking Caribbean. Members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF and other key stakeholders are being encouraged to remain steadfast in their support for victims of domestic and gender-based violence. The call was made recently by National Security State Minister Xavier Main during a regional workshop on operational command of gender-based violence policing. He says leaders of special police units dealing with these issues must constantly evaluate whether the strategies, operational decisions and use of resources at their disposal are helping to create a professional, sensitive and unrelenting response to the needs of victims and their families. He adds that a victim-centered approach to gender-based policing must be equally focused on confronting potential and existing perpetrators. This is with a view to having them desist from antisocial behavior and violence. Additionally, a balanced approach must be developed to create a change in perpetrator's attitude. 
And finally, in observance of Trafficking in Persons Week, the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons, NATFATIP, will continue its series of activities until Saturday. It's being coordinated with partners from the other ministries, departments and agencies of government to increase public education on human trafficking. The Social Development Commission will engage communities through a series of sensitization sessions, while the National Security Ministry will engage social work students at the Portmore Community College in a lecture. The ministry will also participate in the Office of the Rapporteur for Trafficking in Persons seminar on July 29. Manager of the Trafficking in Persons Secretariat, Audrey Budai, says the agency intends to target young people from various communities. There's still a number of persons, including persons in different areas of where we work, not necessarily our own organizations, but who would need to know some more about trafficking in persons. And without apology as well, we wanted to use this week to make sure that our own partners, our people in the country, our people in the community get to know the amount of work and what we would have done as a team. Ms. Bodai was speaking at a JI's think tank yesterday. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, which is also a member of the task force, will undertake human trafficking sensitization activities with children in state care. The week is being observed under the theme, Abuse and Use of Technology, with the tagline, Open Your Eyes, Be Wise, Spot Them, Stop Them. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching.